In 1956, Floyd Patterson captured the vacant heavyweight title in the wake of Rocky Marciano's retirement. But what if Sonny Liston had fought in that tournament? He fought only once in the year and would not return until 1958. Upon his return, Liston forged a trek toward the title that encompassed vanquishing the top contenders of the division. His shot at the title was deemed impossible as he was so clearly being ducked. By the Patterson camp. Let's go over this worthy accomplishment that culminated in the 1962 evisceration of Floyd Patterson by Sonny Liston. On January 29, 1958, Sonny Liston TKO'd Billy Hunter in two rounds. Hunter would be ranked the sixth best heavyweight the very next year by Ring Magazine. On August 6, 1958, Sonny Liston stopped Wayne Bethea in one lone round. Wayne was ranked 8th by the ring the previous year. On February 18, 1959, Sonny Liston scored a 6th round TKO over Mike Dijon, who was consistently ranked from 1957 to 1960. He peaked at number 6 in 1960. Up next, on April 15, 1959, was a third round stoppage over Cleveland Big Cat Williams. The Big Cat was unranked by the ring until 1961, where he clocked in at 7th. While we're on the subject, Liston doubled down with a second round TKO on Williams a year later on March 21st, 1960. Oddly enough, Williams ascended the ranks and peaked at 4th during Liston's title reign between 1963 and 1964. On August 5th, 1959, Nino Valdez was knocked out in three rounds by Liston. Valdez was a solid top contender who was ranked first during Rocky Marciano's reign between 1953 and 1954. He was ranked second in 1958 before Liston deranked him in 1959. On April 25, 1960, Sonny stopped Roy Harris in the first round. Harris was ranked fourth by the ring in 1957. On July 18, 1960, Liston knocked out Zora Foley in three rounds. Foley was consistently ranked by the ring from 1956 to 1966 peaking at number one in 1959. He wasn't ranked in 1967 because Muhammad Ali made light work of him. It's worth noting, Foley mostly remained a top five ranked contender until he fell off. On September 7th, 1960, Sonny Liston managed a decision against Eddie Machen. Notable is how this is the first and only decision in this trek of contenders. It should come as no surprise that even in defeat, Machen laid the foundation for how to beat Liston. Cassius Clay would capitalize in 1964. Machen, the last of Liston's terror-inducing contender smackdown, was consistently ranked from 1957 to 1961, peaking at number one in 1957. He returned to number six in 1963 during Liston's reign. He last ranked at ninth in 1964. Some fights didn't make the cut, like the Burt Whitehurst duology, which saw Liston win two decisions. He knocked Burt through the ropes at the end of their rematch. Liston also doubled down on Howard King with a third round stoppage after originally scoring a seventh round stoppage. Willie Besmanov absorbed a great beating and was stopped before the seventh could begin. So, bonus points to Liston for absolutely crushing the division en route to his destiny as champion. He's the most ducked heavyweight in history for a reason, though the 1910s color bar scarred greats may have a claim to. Let's tally things up. Liston essentially tore through the top eight of his time. Here are the contenders at their best ranked. Let's fill out the list. 
Machen takes number one despite Foley having beaten him due to how he performed better against Liston. Both Machen and Foley beat Valdez. Mike Dijon beat Billy Hunter, hence his ascension. If we wanted a top 10, the final two spots could go to Burt Whitehurst at 9th for surviving to the final bell against Liston, and Willie Besmanov, who beat Howard King, Bob Baker, and our 5th ranked Mike Dijon. I hope this showcase puts into perspective how incredible Sonny Liston was, as he proved to be undeniable in his quest to be heavyweight champion. Eventually, Floyd Patterson overruled the ducking and allowed Liston a shot. He was vanquished twice in vintage Liston style. Long live the Big Bear, and may he rest in peace.